Hey guys, what's up, Ruben here from the Midnight Garage. So today we're going to wiretuck a Honda Civic EG. Um, well, I'm already going to say sorry for the lack of footage for the last couple of days because this video usually takes quite long to make. Although we're going to make the video for a Honda Civic EG, you will notice some striking similarities with, for example, a Honda Integra and also some other models like, for example, Honda Del Sol that share a similar engine bay and the wire tuck is, well, 99% the same for each and every one of them. Please note that this one's right-hand drive and has a fuse box on this side, while this one is left-hand drive and has a fuse box on the other side. All right, so before I start, there are two things I want to say. Um, one, there is no battery here. I already had done a battery relocation here. If you want to have more information about the battery relocation, I've already done a video about that in the past, so links in the description if you want to know that. Secondly, I've already removed the washer fluid bottle and everything's gone there. If you happen to be interested in removing that bottle completely, there's just a couple of bolts just behind the bumper and then you can just yank everything out and then it's just like a hose here. And if you have a rear wiper washer, then you have a hose to the back as well. And that's pretty much it. You can remove everything and you save a couple of pounds. Now, do keep in mind that a lot of countries have laws against that. So for example, here in Holland, it's not allowed to drive a car without a wash bottle. So this would have actually been not road legal here. So please check the laws before you do so. And then it's actually done in five or 10 minutes if you want to do so. Before we're actually going to start, I will remove the hood. There's actually no reason for me to actually do that, but I prefer working on an engine uh, without the hood in the way. So it's slightly easier for me. Much better. This will ease things up a whole lot for me. If you guys remember the previous video I did, you remember that I talked about the wiper motor and that I advised to keep it, even though it distracts a little bit from the clean engine bay that you have, because having wipers is actually pretty useful in case it rains. If you live in a country where it never rains and they're not mandatory, you can delete them. But if you don't, then it's better to just keep it there, even though it's kind of an eyesore. But fortunately for EGs, there is none. That is because Honda decided to tuck the wiper motor underneath the coal there. Depends on the left-hand drive and right-hand drive model. The left-hand drive model has it here. The right-hand drive model has it there. But yeah, that's really great because that means that you can keep the wiper motors but still have a clean engine bay. All right, time to start. I usually start with removing the engine loom from the main loom and then loosening the main loom from the front to the back on both sides of the engine bay. Bad news, the wire loom in this car is a total mess, so I would definitely need to rebuild some things here and there. But usually if you have a proper wire loom, then they're connected with these tie rip clips that you can still see here. And you can just, you know, pull them off. Removing the wire loom is actually pretty easy as it's the same from both sides. It starts roughly here, usually depending on what options you have. And then it moves past here, past the strut tower, and then it goes behind here and then into the firewall. Yeah, this is definitely a quality wire loom. Before we continue, I want you to take a good look at these connectors. Some connectors might vary slightly, but they always have a lot of black wires coming out of them. This is a ground point and it needs to be bolted up to the chassis somewhere. It doesn't really matter where as long as it's bolted to the chassis. This is probably one of the most important things. The first time I did a wire tuck, I forgot to do this because I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was something to hang it up on and it wasn't actually needed. But yeah, it turned out it was and I got lots of electrical issues like, for example, the headlights turned on when I turned the blinker on and whatnot. Just make sure you connect all the ground points when you do this. Right, I'm almost done with removing the wire loom on this side. Now, there is a wire loom that goes from here to the wiper motor and you do have to remove the coal in order to get through the plug. You can also cut it, but I prefer not to cut anything if you don't need to because first up, it's more work and secondly, there's more chance for things going wrong in the future. All right, here's the connector for the wiper motor. Now, think about how clean you want your engine bay. If you want your engine bay really, really clean and you want to keep your wiper system intact, then it's cleanest to drill a hole somewhere here through the firewall and then make the wires come up through there and then connect it to the motor. That way there won't be any wires going back into the engine bay. I'm not gonna do that. I am going to route it back through the engine bay and it will look slightly more cluttered, but yeah, I will I think that's slightly better than drilling a hole through the firewall. So next up, we got these wires here that go into the master cylinder. You actually don't need to put these back. The only function they have is that the brake light in the cluster goes on whenever your fluid level is low, and then you need to top that up or you need to replace your brake pads. Now, if you check your car regularly, you don't really need to have a light for that. 
So you can just cut the wires here and then don't put everything back. Or if you really want to keep the light function on, then you can put everything back. But then you will have some more wires in your engine bay. We got the left side of the wire loom all disconnected from the engine bay. Here's the engine loom itself. And that's one part done. Now we move on to the other side. Have I mentioned that the wire loom of this car is a mess? Here is the other ground point. For some reason on this side it's a different one than on the other side. But uh, yeah, keep an eye on this one. Because this one's important. On the older Honda models these were usually screws. And they were a pain in the ass to remove. But fortunately Honda changed that with the EGs. And now they're just 8 millimeters. So it's very easy to remove these. Oh yeah, if you haven't noted anything, you can see there are two differences. This one has a small lip here. Now that's for this side because there's a small edge you can fit the lip in. And this one's for the other side. And this one is the one that goes to the battery. And this one is the one that goes to the starter. One loose fuse box. Now I've seen one time that a guy cut all these wires and then soldered everything together to put the fuse box back into the cabin. But don't do this, definitely don't. You can see here that there are some small clips. Just loosen everything up and there are some connectors behind them. See? All right, I'm done disconnecting the main loom from the engine bay. Here we have the main loom. And here's the part of the engine loom. And now we have to feed everything back into the cabin. But first we're going to cut some wires. As you've probably seen in the previous video, the wires will go back into the cabin, then through a hole here and then pass the fender all the way back to the front. But the only part that has to go to the front is this part that goes to the headlights and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it here. This way it's long enough to go back into the cabin and then back out of the car. And then I can solder everything together and lengthen everything outside of the car. And I only have to cut it once here and I don't have to put everything back into the cabin. So it eases my work up slightly. If you are unfamiliar with wire tucks in general, then I can advise you to use this method. Use a piece of tape, tape off a number or a letter or whatever on each side and then cut through it and then do the next one, etc. Because if you do it like this, you will have a reference from which cable came from where, and then it's very easy to lengthen everything and connect everything again. Uh, usually most of the colors are the same, so you don't really, you can't really make that much mistakes, but you know, better safe than sorry, and better to check everything twice. Right, time to put everything back into the cabin. So my advice is to first push the rubber in with, for example, some needle nose pliers. Just push it in like this, because it's easier to do from the outside than from the inside. There we go. So at this point, I'm very happy that this car does not have an interior except for a dashboard. Um, if you have an interior, you would need to pull the carpet back and there's like a rubber mat behind there, behind the firewall. And you have to pull that one back as well and then you can reach the wires that are behind. The wires are at absolute shit location all the way up here though, because you know, Honda didn't really intend for you to wire tuck their cars. That took quite some work, but I finally got one side here. Here's the first part, that's the part that goes to the fuse box. Here we have the second part that goes to the engine loom. And here we have the third part that will be the part that goes to the headlights. And that's the part that we're going to lengthen really soon. Now, next up, you need to think about the fuse box location. Now, since this car doesn't have an interior, I'm figuring that I, I, you can use the old bracket and I can put the fuse box here underneath the glove compartment but I figured if you have a full interior you might not think that looks pretty nice most people however tend to put the fuse box into the glove compartment you would need to modify your fuse box slightly in order to fit and you would need to remove this bracket and you need to make a couple of holes mainly the easiest way to go about this is to make a small hole here so you can fit all these wires plus the two going to the battery and the starter motor and then put the fuse box here and when you're done close everything up and you got a nicely tucked fuse box if you do not want it in your glove compartment you can also make a custom bracket and place it somewhere here near the firewall usually when you have the seats in and full interior it isn't really all that noticeable but you know that's a choice you're going to have to make do you want it somewhere where it's easily accessible or do you want it somewhere where you can't see it so the choice is yours on the other side, however, we're a little bit more fortunate because as you can see right there in the middle, that place is a little more easily accessible. So here we have the other side. So just like I did on the other side, this plug is for the wiper motor. That one's going back in the engine bay. This is for the engine harness. 
this one's going to stay here. Then we have these two wires, like I said before, I'm not going to use those, so these can stay here as well. And this is the little loom that goes to the headlights again and that goes past the fenders. By the way, for this setup, I'm going to use the original holes in the firewall and I'm not going to drill any new ones and I'm not going to use the sensor hole from the heater matrix. That way you can do your wire tuck and you don't need to lengthen any wires of your wire loom itself and therefore it's easier to do so and there are less things that can go wrong. You can always upgrade that later on to a custom wire loom, but that's a video to come. So that means that we're going to feed the engine loom back into the hole here. And once it's there, I'm going to connect it to the plugs that are in the cabin. And we're done. So I had to fiddle a bit to get some room underneath the dashboard, but the connectors are all connected again. And now the wire that I'm going to work on is this one. The one that goes to the wiper motor. So that means putting it back into the engine bay as well, which is a shame, but you know, I like some working wipers. The way I route the wires going to the wiper motor is underneath the clutch slave cylinder, then past the master brake booster because it's all black so you don't really see it, and then it goes all the way up in there. Like this, it's all connected and it's hardly in the view. And now the only thing that's left on that side is the wiring that goes to the headlights. Now for this side I will use this hole right here. I will make a small cut here. Mainly because that's the furthest it can go. And that way the connectors are still in the inside of the firewall. With this one it's not possible plus it's even more inside. Uh, there is another one. I will zoom in slightly. That little hole right there. But the only way you can do that is by either cutting the wires, and I can't recommend that because it's your engine loom, or by deep pinning each plug, and then you can force everything in, and then you can repin everything inside the firewall. But the only way you can do that properly is when the dashboard is removed. So that's a possibility as well without making a custom wire loom. But the easiest one is definitely to go for that one. And once you're done, it looks something like this. Obviously, it's going to look a whole lot cleaner if you have a custom engine wire loom that you either made yourself or purchased from, I don't know, rye wire or whatever. But, you know, if you have your root pop, people make pictures of your engine bay, then, you know, it still looks pretty good like this. All right, that already starts to look pretty good in my eyes, but, uh, you know, we need to continue. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to lengthen the wires that are going to the front. So for this next step, I removed the fender. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that there's absolutely no reason to do so because you can easily do it without the fenders if you jack up the car and remove the wheel and the inner arch. But I just removed the fender so it's a bit more clear for you guys what to do. So if you look closely at the fender, you see that there's a hole here and this is the hole I'm going to use to route the wiring all the way to the front. So time to pull the wire loom through. So if for some reason you forgot to mark the wires, there's no problem. You can simply count all the wires. And in this case, there are 12. So I know they're all correct and they're all here. And now it's time to put the front wire loom back and then piece everything together. I've used the ground point that I've talked earlier about as the starting point. And now I'm going to use that to muck up all the other wires if everything fits. I will see and I will move everything backwards because if you look at it like this you can see that the cable is sufficient and you, I won't need to put any cables in between. So that would ease things up. So I'm going to let the H4 headlight wiring go through this hole right here below. That's because if you open the hood you can hardly see it. If you want to tuck it even more that's possible. You can tuck it all the way underneath here. Then you would need to make the wire slightly longer but I think this is good enough. Because if you look at it like this you can't see a thing. And now it's time for the least fun part and that's piecing everything back together. Now always solder everything, always use heat shrink and do it properly because you don't want to get any issues, especially as the wires are not as easily accessible as they were before. So take some time, do it properly. All right, so far so good for one side. Now, this is good enough for now, but if you don't have the inner mud guards like this one has, make sure you properly attach the wire loom to the chassis because you don't want it to get loose and hit your tires because, well, you're fucked if that happens. But if you have an inner mud guard like this car has, you should be safe like this. Time to put the fender back on. 
That is looking good already. Now it's time to do the wiring on the other side. Right, so I've already done some editing on this video yesterday since I've been working on this video for a couple of days now. And I'm guessing that right now we're somewhere at the 15 to 16 minute mark. And I think that's already pretty long. So um, I think it's best to just skip the whole part where I'm going to lengthen the wires there since it's exactly the same as on that side and I've already just shown you how to do that. Um, yeah, so if you guys are okay with that, we're going to skip that in three, two, one. So far for the electrical part, let's move on to the other things because we can still make the engine bay slightly cleaner than it is already. This vacuum line can be routed underneath the master brake cylinder. Uh, you can swap the vacuum lines out, but make sure that this one-way valve is installed in the correct position. I've noticed with some intakes that you can bend the metal tube and with some you can't. So the best way is to just get a vice grip, try to bend it a little bit. If you see if it's bending, then stop. But if you can see that it's turning, then you can just turn it all the way around and then you can have the bend on the bottom side and therefore it's even cleaner. Well, lucky for me, I could flip the tube and now I've rooted the vacuum line underneath the mass brake cylinder and as you can see, it already looks a whole lot cleaner. Next up is the throttle cable. You can see it route all the way from here, all the way back to there. You can see that this car used to be DPFI, but is converted to MPFI. Um, most people that live in left and drive countries use the MPFI Honda CRX throttle cable as it's really short and goes from here to there. That saves you a whole lot of throttle cable and because you save a lot of throttle cable, it not only looks cleaner, but you have less chance of having a sloppy or non-responsive throttle cable. Now, I'm not going to do that with this car. I'm going to grab some brackets, install it to the bottom of the intake manifold and then route everything below the intake manifold. It's quite hard, but in the end it still looks good and you don't have much chance of getting a sloppy throttle cable. Yep, that's a pretty long throttle cable. There we go, I've routed the throttle cable underneath the intake and I've put the bracket on the subframe. Now you don't have it looping all the way past here anymore. Next up we have this ground cable. For some reason it's installed on the intake manifold. Uh, usually it's installed here, which are where it goes from the chassis to the valve cover. I don't know why they changed that, but this is definitely wrong. You definitely need a ground cable on your valve cover because it can lead to some very nasty electrical issues if you don't. So I'm going to swap that up. Fortunately, there are a couple of holes here that I can also use to put the... Th Fortunately, there are a couple of holes right here where I can put the ground point on. So I will use one of the bolts of the valve cover and I will use one of those. There we are, much cleaner. Next up, we have the radiator overflow tank. Now, fortunately, this is a pressure-based system, so you can pretty much install it anywhere you like. You can install it lower or you can install it higher than the original location. Also, these brackets are easily bendable, so you can pretty much put it in any position you want. I usually install it near the vertical slat in the center of the T-frame in the front. Um, therefore, it's out of... That way, if you look at your engine bay normally, you won't see it, but if you need it, you can still grab it. As for the clutch safety cylinder reservoir, it was here, but I've put it inside the cabin and I've rooted it through the same hole where the wiring goes through. Uh, a lot of people tend to put it behind the coal as well. That's possible as well, but then you would have the hose going from here all the way to there. The same route basically that the wires for the wiper motor go. And you have to take care that you don't hit anything because the wiper arms are usually turning around. So if, as long as you put it somewhere where it's safe, that's fine as well. In both occasions, it's pretty hard to refill the clutch slave cylinder reservoir anyways. So, uh, well, that's up to you. Next, we got the injector plugs. We can route these underneath the fuel rail. Simply pull them off, route them underneath, and then put them back on. If you don't know how to loosen them, if you look closely, you can see there are two metal clips. Simply grab a flathead screwdriver and just pull it this way and then start pulling and then pull the other one and this one will come up very easy. Now they're rooted underneath the fuel rail and as you can see it looks a little bit cleaner. The two distributor connectors can simply be moved underneath the distributor and that way it will look cleaner as well. It should take you like one minute tops. There, that looks a little bit cleaner as well. This is the charcoal canister. If you have a car that's either OBD0 or OBD1, you can simply remove it. Make sure you cap off the lines going to the intake manifold though. Anything helps, right? And the last thing that I'm going to do is reroute the map sensor until it's underneath the intake manifold. Um, most EGs don't even have to do this because with most EGs, the map sensor is already on the throttle body. But for some reason with this one, it isn't. So I'm just going to move it 
and that will look slightly but only slightly better. There, that looks a lot cleaner. If you can look closely you can see that the bracket is completely bent out of shape because it was stuck as hell but I finally got it loose so that's good. So now it's time for me to clean the engine bay up a little bit and then it's time for me to enjoy my work. Well, definitely not going to give the engine bay a full detail, but cleaning it up slightly should look a whole lot better. And there we are. Well, let's see if I can still find some stock footage and the original footage from before I started, so we can have some nice before and after pictures. Naturally you can go a whole lot further than this, but this is pretty much as far as you can go for basically a weekend of work. Three things people mainly do are the clutch line, you can tuck the clutch line, make a custom fuel line and get rid of the original fuel filter, and of course delete all your brake lines and do a brake line tuck kit. These three things will definitely help make your engine bay look a whole lot cleaner. After that you can for example go for ITBs or twin carb setup, but you know, this is as far as we go for today because I think this video is long enough by now. So yeah guys, that's it for today. I put a whole lot of work in this video so I definitely hope you guys like them. If you guys want to see more videos like this then hit the subscribe button and if you guys got any questions related to the wire tug then definitely post them in the comments and I will see if I can reply to them. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye!